16. Brother. Okay. You got the baby? All right. 15. Huh? 15. 16. Start at 16. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. what? I'll tell you when to stop. Uh, Dang, read that, please. Just verse 16? No, 16 through 18. Oh. All right. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Does it say acceptable year? It Just the year of the Lord's favor? It might in the kingdom. Okay. Right. Would you read, please? And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Elijah. And when he had I'm sorry, not Elijah, Isaiah. It's a different old English here. Okay. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. <clears throat> hold that part right there I want you to hold that part and let me tell you a story years ago when Les Brown came you, you all familiar with who Les Brown is? Mm -hmm. no don't ask me after service I'll tell you who he is when, but he's a well known motivational speaker when he came through the airport and uh, I was doing whatever I was doing at that time for the airport services. Um, I saw him a while off. I think I've told some of you all the story before. When I saw him, I just said a little service of things, but I recognized who he was. But the way in which I said it, he walked up to me. Nobody else in the line knew who he was. Most remember him because of Gladys Knight. He was once married to Gladys Knight. But he looked at me, and he looked around, and he said, why are you here? He said, why are you at this hill? What are you doing here? Why aren't you out in the world? Why don't more people hear your voice? He said, you ain't got no business here. This is a waste of your time. Empower. Empower that a recognizable man or a man of great renown, didn't even know me, and recognized something in me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You sitting in that audience, in that synagogue, you've been empowered far beyond your wildest imagination. People are a funny breed, though. Let me tell you why. Verse 20. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed. You know why they were fixed on him? Who are you to roll up in here and say that to us? When people's eyes is fixed on you, they fixed on you for a reason. 
How further can you say that? Okay. Verse 21. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Know what he was saying? I'm the one. I'm the one. Turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 49. <laughs> Baby, I thought you said I was preaching today. Okay, uh -uh. now it's uh-uh. Isaiah 49, chapter 8. Brother, you got your scripture. When you get there, would you read that, please? Isaiah 49, chapter 8. Everyone that verse 8. Verse 8, excuse me. 49, verse 8. Go ahead. <clears throat> This is what the Lord says. At just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give you to the people as my covenant with them. Through you, I will reestablish the land of Israel and assign it to its own people again. I will say to the prisoner, come out in freedom. And to those in darkness, come out into the light. They will be my sheep, grazing in, grass, in green pasture, on a hill, and on hills that were previously bare. They were neither hunger or thirst. The Assyrian sun will not reach them anymore, for the Lord in his mercy will lead them. He will lead them beside cool waters, and he will make my, mountain, he will make my mountains into level paths for them. The highways will be raised above the valleys. See, my people will return from far away, from lands to the north and west, and from as far as the south as Egypt. Okay. Back to Luke. In the Latin, in verse 19, in 419, he says to proclaim. The people in the synagogue knew what he was talking about. Remember, he referenced the book of Isaiah. They knew what he was talking about. He was proclaiming to them that which you have sought from the old, from the prophets of old. I'm the one. I'm the one who Isaiah was talking about that's going to bring you, as Brother Gerard had just read, all of the time, in the acceptable time, I have heard you. Here's, this is the one in which they were talking about. Let me show you how people are. After he said, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, here's our people. Is this not Joseph's son? Uh-oh. He said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath, in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except <laughs> Naaman the Syrian. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Why are they filled with wrath? Dude ain't call him out. The dude. Christ didn't call him out his name. They didn't even say nothing about their mothers. He was pointing to the heart of the map. Then he went further, then they went further. And after they were filled with wrath and rose up, listen to this, and rose up and thrust him out of the city. And they led him 
to the brow of the hill on which their city was built that they might throw him down over the cliff. Wow. Thank you, Pastor, for telling us the truth about ourselves and to show him their thanks. They rose up to kill him. In church. That's deep. He brought them empowerment which they would not receive. What should be done with a people like that? Because many times we stop and we blame situations on everybody else but on who to blame rests. And I know if we don't do it here in our wonderful church, I, we know of people who do that. You talk to them all the time. They have, a, they have a reason for why they're not in the place of power. This is one of the great empowerment verses ever given in life, with that which we read in verse 18 and 19. And yet these people, to thank Christ for it, rose up, thrust, took him, grabbed him. When they say they rose up, they grabbed him and dragged him out of the temple and was going to throw him over a cliff. Because he spoke right to their hearts. The heart of the matter, he was saying, is not, not, not that God isn't here for you. You don't want to be here for God. You don't really want to accept his empowerment. You know, we say this all the time. If you continue to do what you've always done, you'll continue to be what you've always been. It ain't the amount, it's not the hours that you put into your work. You know, it's just that, 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 that's, that you have to do. But what is it that you put into those hours? Hmm? What is it that you put into that? It's not that the scriptures are not viable and empowering for people. It's not something that they truly want. They looking for something someplace else, anywhere else, but to turn to the one who can free them. And truly, if you're going to take Christ, grab him up, th throw him over a cliff, gee, that's, that's not a real welcome, is it? Somebody, that's not, well, somebody come to welcome you with open arms to let you know, I'm here to deliver you. Oh, that's good. Would you come in the back? Because we're getting ready to bury you in the backyard. You come to deliver us. Because that, what gives you the right, mm -hmm. you, it appears as if when you hand out or offer empowerment mm -hmm. of what you call empowerment, what you're saying is, is something I'm lacking. Something you're lacking, yes. Right, when you're offering me, I'm, me empowerment, mm -hmm. then you're saying there's something I'm lacking, mm -hmm. but I think I'm all that in a bag of chips. Uh -huh. so now you're telling me I'm lacking. I gotta get rid of you because you might go out and tell somebody else I'm lacking. And and my front has been that I'm not lacking. Uh-huh. So I need to get rid of you. And which is why he further said, you know, all of the lepers that there were there, prophet only here one of them. And he ain't want the way that the prophet told him to be healed, to go bathe in the river. Right. Seven, he didn't want that. But that was the only one that was healed. See, this thing of which we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to people, it may, it may to the outside seem like, oh, that's just words, that's just words. That's, oh, it's much more than that. Because you can see through here the reaction to people with it back then and now. It makes you pause and wonder what in the world people are thinking about. I say that in referencing when Les Brown took, those were empowering words to me. Yet I said to him, well, the reason you know why I'm not is because yada, 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 yada. I gave that man six or seven different excuses of why I wasn't out about the business of the Lord. He didn't know me from anywhere. And yet, he came to bring me an empowerment. That came. He had to say nothing to me. But hey, here's my ticket. 
You know, yeah, have a nice day. Yeah, I'm Les Brown. Have a nice day. He didn't have to say that. He didn't have to say anything more than because he, he, he didn't know me anything else but that. And yet I gave him a list full of excuses of why I, and what you said was, in the empowering moment, he revealed what I was lacking. Mm -hmm. But I ain't going to pick him up and throw him out the airport window. When he left, and I've never heard from him again, when he left, I had to think about what it was that God was telling me. What was the reason why I wasn't in the place that God said I should have been in? Why would I have blamed it on that man? When the message he gave me confirmed what God had already told me. Why did I give him those lists of excuses? Now when you can figure out why I gave him those list of excuses, you'll also have a small list of your own to fill out. Is there anybody here that believes that God cannot get you to where you have desired to be in that which is in accord with his word? Is anybody here that believes that? Now it's time because we're amongst family. Is anybody here that doesn't believe that through God's empowerment, you can't get to where you desire to be as long as it's in accordance with God's word. You can't get there. That's the trick, there. That's the trick. As long as it's in accordance with God's word. Well, if you phrased it like that, sister, I can. But is anybody here to believe that you can? Believe that we can? You can't. You cannot get where God has desired you to be, to be placed. You're his children. Ain't that what we say? Ain't y'all God's children? Yep.